Mr. Minnick here, showing my students the 80s love. This is an introduction to the ASCII art project found at minic.com under this Python link and unit one, unit drawing with turtles. Scrolling down to the projects area, we open up the project specifications for ASCII art project. The ASCII art project is a goodie but oldie, salvaged from the 1980s when you heard music like this. And the first step of the programming process is to understand what the heck your boss or teacher wants you to do. And I simply want 80s style ASCII art designed in a way that could decorate my classroom, my website, or your Instagram feed, or pretty much anything. Uh, it will not all be hung on my wall here in my room 311 classroom. There is this uh, entry at Wikipedia that explains what ASCII art is from the old days, but these are all examples here that you see of ASCII art, uh, such as this army tank, this helicopter, uh, the words hello world spelled out in block letter style, etc. cetera. Um, pretty much, uh, emoticon type art is uh, what I'm talking about here. Uh, here's the entry as you can see on emoticons where you have to use keyboard characters such as, um, well, that one might not be doable in Python, so just ignore that particular entry there. Back to the project. Step two of the programming process is to draw what it is that you planned to code. Uh, in this particular school year, your drawing will be due on Monday, showing me some evidence that you drew this literally by bringing in a piece of graph paper, um, a piece of uh, uh, non-graph paper, but done accurately, or perhaps this online virtual graph paper. If you're using your school-issued iPad, with uh, Notability, there are some uh, templates in Notability that you might find. But here uh, on this virtual graph paper website is an example of me planning out how to spell the letter M using uh, um, ASCII art. So somewhere on this graph paper, I'm just gonna plop my uh, cursor in there. I'm gonna start over here at the left edge to keep it simple. The left edge, upper right corner. I'm clicking my mouse there and I'm typing the letter uh, M. And I'm going to single click in that cell and type the letter M right below it, etc. I'm going to make the letter M uh, five letters tall. And as you see here, I'm going to then uh, make the diagonal part of the classic uppercase M by putting M's there, there, and there, and there. Now, if you don't like this M, you could design an M differently. There's probably a lot of different kind of like font choices of how you would make your M, but this is an example of old school ASCII art. I'm not in the mood to arbitrarily mix lowercase M and uppercase M, so I'm going to fix that lowercase M there that, where the shift button wasn't held down, and I'll put a capital M in. But unfortunately, it looks like there's no easy way to erase things. And until I learn how to use this website better, I messed up and I'm going to have to erase everything and start all over again. So I'm gonna keep it simple this time and just uh, use the letter uh, an asterisk and uh, just, no, asterisk is a uh, shift also. I'm gonna use less than symbols, no. 
I'm going to use hyphens to spell the letter M. The point here is to keep one hyphen per grid because that will represent the monospaced courier font that you'll see when we use Python to print this out. So now that I've designed the letter M, I'm going to uh, pretend that my design phase of the programming process is finished. Um, we haven't yet figured out here in the school year 19-20 how to get the printer to work in room 311, we'll have to troubleshoot that. But theoretically, you could print this and hand it in on, say, Monday. If you want to, I give you permission at this time only to pull out your personal smartphone or your school-issued iPad and take a picture of the design that you might be able to finish during class time. But if you want to work on this at home and have a way of saving this, and then you can show me or hand in digitally, say, the Schoology, a file. Perhaps you print it as a PDF. I'm going to click print, but instead of HS311, I'm going to do what's called save as PDF. I'm going to click save. And for some reason, it doesn't always come through here. So for some reason, this isn't saving it. So I'm going to use print using system dialog. I'm going to change it there to uh, save as PDF using the school Mac computer. I'm gonna save it to my downloads area and call it ASCII project design. So however you could get it done, just show me evidence that you designed something purposely as ASCII art before you even opened up Replit and started typing code. I'm going to double check to see if that uh, design actually uh, shows up here as a PDF file. Nope, it didn't print correctly. So for some reason, this website only works some of the time when you try to print. So you could just do Command Shift 4, all held down simultaneously on these Mac computers. You could then lasso the area of your design with your mouse and take a screen snapshot of it. And then as a graphic, it's usually found on your, what, in what's called the desktop folder, where you could double click it, the screenshot. And there is evidence of my purposeful design where I have one character per cell, spaced out as best I could with this virtual graph paper. So now let's turn that graphic into uh, digital art making use of the Python programming language. So, so now that we've designed this relatively simple layout here, we now turn this into actual computer-generated art. So I'm using this website called Replit. It totally rocks here. Other schools might, that are watching this video might use something else. Um, the first command that I teach in the school year is print, spelled P-R-I-N-T, lower, must be lowercase. The print command in Python version three, which is what we're using, requires parentheses. Then within those parentheses, it's optional, but you should put stuff. If I were to run a simple program that's just print empty parentheses, nothing comes out here in this console tab other than parentheses. But if I put in something that's in double quotes, like hello world, and then click run, it actually prints whatever's in the double quotes. So instead of hello world here, what I want is the first horizontal set of characters that where I'm waving my mouse right now on this uh, design. I want a hyphen followed by count with me, one, two, three blank spaces, then another hyphen, hyphen, three blank spaces, hyphen, hyphen, three blank spaces, hyphen, hyphen, one, two, three presses of the space bar on my keyboard, hyphen. I'm going to run that, and there is the top slice 
of my uh, intended full piece of art. You got to print from top down. Unlike building up a triple decker ice cream cone um, at uh, what, where I affectionately call it the bear, uh, eighth, eighth in uh, some street that starts with the letter A, I forget. I exactly know where to find it. If it's a 90 degree day on the boardwalk in Ocean City, New Jersey, I walk straight to this place called the bear. Um, hobby horse, I think ice cream, but I call it the bear. And I eat uh, three scoops of ice cream on a sugar, on one of those uh, sugar cones. But there, when they build that ice cream cone, they build it from bottom up. But in code, we have to work from top down in this situation. So get used to that. Uh, there might be a, an Ed Puzzle asking uh, the audience, where is Mr. Minnick's favorite ice cream shop in Ocean City, New Jersey? And if you fast forward any of my videos and don't get certain key things and nuggets of random information like that, then you lose points because you probably didn't listen to all the words thoroughly. Okay, back to the point because I don't want to be too off the wall here in the middle of a video. So the next row of characters, hyphen, hyphen, space, hyphen, hyphen. Um, so I need hyphen, hyphen, space. So let's just copy and paste. By highlighting that and then holding down on a Mac keyboard, Command C, on a Windows keyboard, it'd be like Windows C or Control C or something. Clicking my cursor there, hitting the Enter key on my keyboard and holding down Control V as in victory. But editing this line of code with another hyphen there and another hyphen, say, there. And then backing this up and hitting delete where I have to to make sure I don't have extra spaces. I think that's what I want. I'm going to click run. And that is the M from top down so far after two lines. Unfortunately, things that are great like this need time and development here. There's no quick way to do this. Uh, do not be that person that just clicks the line tool and draws on your graph paper because there's no way with the print command to just draw freestyle here in this black window. No, I need to basically print. So watch this. This is an advanced trick. A tri a trick. I'm going to print a solid batch of hyphens. And then I'm going to knock out where the spaces are. So there's a space here and here, right here where I'm carefully waving my mouse. And all of this is spaces here. So watch what I'm doing right now, kind of like backwards. In the last row, I'm going to put three spaces to represent that last row. Similarly, I'm going to put three spaces there to uh, sort of like fill in those hyphens. Here, I think I want a space there. And I think I wanted a space there. That is, I think, going to work when I click Run. And there you have it. There's the M in ASCII art that matches up the intended design that I did you know, intentionally beforehand. If you just wing your code and just kind of wing it using the print command, often you're very inefficient with large complicated things that are you know, more complicated than the letter M. So now I'm finished with the third step of the programming process. I do have this running. I'm going to do command shift four to do a screen snapshot of that output in the black window. That file from my desktop of this Mac computer will be uploaded to Schoology later for credit. The screen snapshot, perhaps, of your virtual graph paper will be uploaded as credit to show that you did the, the design. Um, sometimes I ask students to do screen snapshots of the actual code. Command Shift 4, click, drag. There's a little evidence of the actual code. Sometimes I ask people to copy and paste that code and put it into a discussion board post so other kids can see it when I'm allowing kids to share code with each other, students. Um, what the heck is that copyright symbol? That's weird. That got in there. I don't know how that got in there. Ooh, is that? Oh, never mind. There was dirt on my screen that I saw, but the audience could not see. Never mind. Anyway, back to, uh, uh, back to this uh, process. Last of all, part of the programming process is to debu oh, debug it. So here's a mistake that somebody made earlier today. I won't say names, but this person's first initial uh, is a B. So this person tried to do this. 
they just tried to hit the enter key here and then picked up with the second row of hyphens here. Sorry, you can't take one print command and spread it out over two lines of code. Each line has to be, start with print and then one slice of your graph paper only can be in each print command. So every print command needs its own like little set of double quotes and parentheses. It's just the way code is. Uh, for now, I'm not gonna show you any more advanced techniques than that. It's a little annoying, but it's just a, a necessary annoying. Okay, so after you debug your code and make sure you uh, get it to execute, here's another intentional mess up. Like somebody's going to probably forget a double quote some, somewhere. And when they run their code, it's gonna give uh, error messages. Here it says bad token on line four, and uh, this is considered a token. Uh, this whole thing is called a token. Anyway, uh, you should just eyeball it and know that you're missing a double quote from having looked at chalkboard, whiteboard examples, as well as my online examples at my website when you eventually find them. And you sometimes are allowed to work with each other in this classroom. Unless it's a quiz or a test, it's usually not considered cheating to get small amounts of help from your coworker before you ask me, the boss, to come over and give you my uh, input. You could always highlight the web page address, copy and paste it, send it in an email to me. Sometimes I have time to get back to you uh, overnight or during a school day um, uh, using this awesome website replit. Uh, lastly, the fifth step of the programming process is to add comments. I'm just gonna copy and paste this heading here from my sample and I'm going to uh, paste it in to my replit project, making room for it above the first print by hitting the enter key a couple times. Command V to paste, changing the name from John Doe to my name, Mr. Minnick. ASCII R project, this is period 11. Work cited, my own brain. I didn't like use any website for inspiration here. And I'll just say work cited, my brain. Now that's silly, like my brain. That's, so none, there were no, I didn't need anybody else's leg up for inspiration. But do admit it, if you're out there looking at like say BTS's fan club website or something and you find inspiration, copy and paste the website address of where you were inspired into this section. Anything to the right of a hashtag in Python it is just a note to other humans. It doesn't affect the corresponding output over here in the black window. It's just the way we uh, document the top of our code with notes that a teacher can read. If you don't put the hashtag there, if you just type Mr. Minnick on a line, then the computer thinks that MR is some kind of command, like print. Because it's not blue, you should know that commands are always blue. By it. So it gives you an error message on line one if you don't put the hashtag there to the far left. Hashtags mean different things in different environments. So in this situation, a hashtag is what we used to do what's called documentation to document your code with comments. And that's a wrap. Pun, uh, not pun intended. Let's just, let's go all out here. And there you have it, everybody. Signing off, the Ask the Art Project introduction. 2019.